Hello, how are you? Hope you're good. As you'll know from the title, today I'm here with a video that combines the two sort of trends that have been going on for years now. <laughs> Definitely not an original idea, I do not know if anyone has done them together. As you might know, there's this thing that's been going around that's called Trash My TBR. I don't, I don't actually know who started either of these things, but I'll try and find it and link it down in the description bar because you should definitely check them out because those, those are great ideas. But Trash My TBR is basically where you show the books that you still have on your TBR but you don't necessarily know if you want to keep them and then people let you know what they think about them, if you should or shouldn't. And then there is a first chapter challenge where you read the first chapter of the book and I think the original one was where you read a couple of first chapters for a couple of books you want to read next and then decide which one you should read next. But I'm gonna read the first chapter to decide whether I should unhold some books or not. Having too many books is not really a problem that I think anyone would class as a problem, but I do need to be space conscious and I do want to have shelves that are filled with things that excite me. Obviously none of these books are gonna go in a bin. <laughs> They're either gonna go to the charity shops, to my friends, or maybe a giveaway. And some of these books that I have had for a very long time don't really spark joy to me or I don't know if they're gonna be my cup of tea anymore and I thought it was time to go through the shelves and see if there are any books that I think maybe are not necessarily for me at this point in time and could be loved and read by someone else. You know your girl did not settle with like three or four books. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why I've done this to myself, but it's done. It's done. It's fine. Just before we move on to that, I really want to quickly speak about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare once again. Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 25,000 classes and courses on basically everything. There's illustration, there's business, entrepreneurship, motivation, which is a lot of things that I look into. But in this video, I really wanted to pitch you something I'm super excited about, and that is a class on writing by Sabata here. Definitely not gonna see her book in this category of the video of unhauling things. Anyway, I'm very excited about that one, so maybe you wanna check it out as well. The courses that at least I have seen were really precise, very to the point. You can see that there was quality control when they were put on. Skillshare is also affordable, especially if you go for an annual prescription that works out under $10 per month and gives you a premium membership, which is access to everything basically. But if you're not quite ready to commit to that, I have good news for you. <laughs> um, I have a link once again that is going to be linked down below in the description bar and in the comment that for the first 500 people who click on it, you get two months for free to check it out, see if that's something you would like to do. So again, the link is in the description. And thank you to Skillshare again for supporting this channel. Right, and let's move on to what I've done. So the first step was to uh, go through my shelves and pick the books that I'm not entirely certain that I want them to be on my shelves anymore. So these, so the books that I picked were not necessarily books that I think would be bad, but maybe something that I at this point don't even remember much about or something that I don't think at this point in time and anywhere near in the future I will be likely to read. So I collected a bunch you know what, let's just go into the footage of me doing that <laughs> and then I'll come back later. So it is almost 10 o'clock on a Wednesday evening, so I thought this is a perfect time <laughs> to start doing this. And I think once I select the books that are gonna go into the trial, <laughs> dun dun dun, I'm gonna show you what they are and I'm gonna separate them and put them in one pile and not all of them are gonna make it back. Ooh. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I told you I'm not messing about. Okay, so I'm gonna very, very quickly go through this massive <laughs> pile that I cannot hold. And I could have been even more um, savage and I could have picked a few more books, but I thought, fancy it, I'll do a round two, but this is definitely enough. These are in the first round. We have Flashfall, Ace of Shades, Strange the Tempest, Bring Me Their Hearts, The Lovely Bones, Amber and Death, Furthermore, The Memory Book, Jinxed, Spectacles, Wolf by Wolf, This Mortal Coil, Everless, which I don't have the dust jacket for, The Light Between World, The Last, Monsters, Vasa in the Night, Pantomime, um, A Shiver of Snow and Sky, The Unbecoming of Maya, Mara Dyer, sorry, Extracted, and The Splintered Silence, Killing Moon. And that is all of them. <laughs> I say that, but it's like a lot. Look at that. Uh, help. <laughs> So I have 23 books to read first chapters of, of books I don't think will excite me. You can see why this took me a month. Uh, first of all, I don't know why I did this because 
As a person, I really enjoyed the Cheng from the middle to the end because at least then you already know the system and stuff. So the beginning is always the least interesting part for me personally to read through. The beginning of the books I'm already not sure if I'm interested enough. Yeah, that was that, that was a it was a journey. <laughs> I have the footage of my thoughts on each of these books, so I will insert that. Obviously, it's hard to judge a book from the first chapter, but I feel like I have such specific tastes sometimes about the writing style, about things that excite me and things that don't necessarily do, that it was actually fairly okay for the most part for me to decide if a book should be with someone else instead of me. So the first category was the books that are definitely going somewhere else. Then there was also a category of the books that are going back on my shelf because they piqued my interest enough. And then the middle category is obviously the one that I'm gonna ask you guys to decide whether I should keep them or I shouldn't. Because a lot of you guys already know my reading style and my taste. And I'm hoping that some of you have already also read these books so you could so you're in a position to tell me if you think it's gonna be for me or not. I'm just gonna roll now the footage of me reading all these books and telling you what book is where. So there's no point in like trying to grab a different one, just let's go for the first one, this mortal coil. The first chapter, please be short, <laughs> 13 pages. Okay, let's do it. Okay, done. I think I'm gonna keep this one. So this is basically a very apocalyptic type of setting so far, although I see the next chapter is two years earlier, which kind of sad because I enjoyed the vibe. And it's basically about this virus, uh, so far from the first chapter, right? It's basically about this virus cloud. It's like a plague and people can catch it and then die in a couple of days. But the catch is that in, or in order to get immunity for this, uh, the healthy people must get immunity by eating a little bit of flesh from the infected so it's very messed up and I kind of like it so I'm gonna be keeping this one so this one is not gonna be up for the unhole a bit for you guys exciting I know that it's probably gonna make zero sense but I mean I watch films and they make zero sense and still enjoy them so you know very high tech everything and she's mentioned the lab so she is maybe a bit of a lab girl not mad. Let's do another one. So I'm gonna grab Wolf by Wolf. Okay. I'm gonna put, currently put this in a maybe pile, but we'll revisit this at the end of all of the first chapters and maybe just decide to unhold this. To be honest, the writing style already is sort of jarring. Not jarring, but not my style. From the very first chapter, uh, is a girl is being selected out of a train with her mother and being subjected to some experiments, which usually would intrigue me, but with the writing style, I'm not convinced. Plus, I have read uh, Invictus by this author and... I actually liked it more than my friends did, but it's still not an author that I would necessarily seek out because um, there were definitely things that could have been done better. And this one is about a girl who's, from the synopsis here, is being trained to kill Hitler because Nazis have won in this universe. So I'm also not sure if I want to read about Nazi Germany because being from where I am, all I've done in school years was like reading a lot of political reads because all of the literature that I read were like political so I feel like I just had that enough of that you know for my lifetime so I'm not sure if this is like what I want to read. Hello it is 9th of May wanting to go run myself a bath and bring a couple of books with me dangerous I know I live on the edge guys it's like real stuff over here um, and read some of the chapters let's go I'm like looking to the pile and I'm like, nothing calls to me. Well, of course not, because this is like a potentially an unhold pile. So that's how I know I picked them right. But okay, so let's just grab the first one. So the first one is The Killing Moon. This would particularly suck <laughs> if I unhold it because it was a gift, but I know AJ wouldn't want me to hold on to something that I don't necessarily want to read. Like, I think I just don't know much about it. And like, I read the synopsis and didn't really like call to me back when I read it. Then we have Spectacle, also 15 pages long. I'm also gonna take this check it off. This Splinter Silence, which is one of the books that I actually think, like I have hopes that it's gonna go back into my shelf. The next thing is Jinx. Let's grab another. Uh, this is the memory book. Um, it's an ARC version, so don't forget your Sam McCoy. I believe this came in the Book Box Club box. Um, hello? 
sorry for not updating you yesterday i read one one of those first chapters and then i had like massive anxiety hit not not from the books at all so the first one that i tried a memory book um and this is about a girl who was diagnosed with neiman pick type c which is a type of dementia at an older age than it is usual and uh she is obviously possibly going to lose her memory and a lot of brain function and she's basically like your muggle version of hermione she's very brainy she does not really care about how she looks like but the thing that she values the most is something that is threatened aka her brain now the actual story or like the idea of this really really seems interesting so i do want to continue with it but um sometimes the writing is very because it is YA, but it's like very YA. So um, a little bit on the fence, I'm gonna put this to maybe, but I do actually, maybe I'm gonna keep this. So that's a little bit of a surprise. Um, I just really want to see what happens and I do appreciate seeing a girl who really values her brain so so much and obviously having that threatened is extremely terrifying one of my worst fears so yay i like her sense of humor it is that kind of high school setting so we'll see maybe this one's gonna go into the pile where you guys advise me whether i should keep it or not uh, and then i read the jinxed one it's basically about this girl who's very technologically savvy and this is in a society where there are like uh, robotics that are very very advanced and um, it's almost like a dystopian thing there's a little bit where someone is running with this bot and they have to sort of lose it and then another bit is like our main girl is just being like all tech savvy but I didn't really feel like it so this is gonna be probably a straight up no but I might keep it here in case you guys want me to read it but I think this is gonna be about this girl finding that bot. I don't know. It just really did not call for me. I was initially excited when I got it, and now I think it's just, it's been too long and it's just. Nah. So I have read the first chapter of the Splintered Silence and actually I don't know about this one so this is gonna go onto the pile of you guys advise and decide. Not much happens in the first chapter honestly, uh, the mother of the main character dies and there's not much else uh, so it's kind of hard to judge but it wasn't something that made me immediately want to read more. Up for you to decide and then the next thing that I'm gonna try Spectacle by Jodie Lynn Zdrock so we'll see how this goes. Okay Spectacle is actually quite intriguing this is about a girl named Natalie who so far there is this morgue in Paris that apparently is basically like a museum and parents with kids go there and people who were murdered and not identified uh, are hung there frozen for people to recognize until and when and if they do then obviously they take the body off but if not then they just go into like a cemetery or whatever and identified bodies um so from the very beginning a very unusual um setting and concept because it's sort of treated like a amusement thing or well not amusement but something you know that even like parents take like little kids to which is bizarre and our main character goes in she gets like a a bouquet of flowers for her mother who's uh as i understand is ill and the father is traveling in the sea when she touches the glass for one of the girls who was hanging on the other side like the body she gets a silent reverse vision i suppose of what had happened and uh when she comes back to it everyone's like staring at her and then the security is asking her to go into this room and they're whispering between each other saying did you understand anything that she was saying because apparently she was probably i don't know what she was saying because only first chapter but um she remembers everything super clearly and especially about the vision or whatever she's experienced there uh but she's looking at her hand and she does not remember why she got the flowers or how the flowers got into her hand so that is basically the first chapter and so i was actually considering putting this back into the shelf because i was really kind of intrigued because i really like the unusual setting i also really enjoyed the writing style so far it, i really enjoyed the sentence structure i don't know I don't know I just I kind of dig the writing style just from the batch but and so whenever I have this thought type of like you know maybe thoughts uh, I'll usually go onto the Goodreads just to check a couple of reviews and just the normal overall rating so it's actually only 350 reviews or ratings I think on Goodreads so it's not like 
easy to judge but some of the reviews were like usually like two and a half three stars so that's kind of sad <laughs> or like not really promising so instead of putting this back on the shelf i'm gonna ask you guys again to vote on this one if you have read it if no one has then i'll i'll, I'll give it a go okay this one was like really quick um i'm very kind of like sad because i actually really liked the cover i know it doesn't you know i just can't do it literally took me like three pages and then i checked in the middle of the book if the writing style is the same but i don't think i've ever disliked the writing style as quickly as i dislike this one it would just came to me personally came out a bit pretentious it's just not for me personally but I'll, I'll show you what i mean just like even any sentence really like more than shadows aided the priest stealth long training stoned his footfalls against the stone his feet were bare in any case um the bedchamber, a study in worn elegance, the priest's eyes made out of graceful chairs of horses and spraying fabrics of wood furnishing, blah blah blah. Um, and then it's just like it always seems like making a simple sentence complicated, which I know could be, you know, somebody's definitely cup of tea, but it's just not mine. And I, sp I found that the dialogue, even the little bits that I've seen, just did not stand out from that other writing of the paragraph at all. It's just like an infant's cry from a tenement across the street, semicolon. He took a step. Laughter from a several floors below his left, semicolon. He straightened as he reached the window that was his goal. A muffled cry and the sound of a scuffle from an alley a block away, semicolon. He paused, comma, listening and frowning. It's just like, I don't know. Very quickly put this in a different pile and move on to the other one. That is... The whole challenge so a also more to the point like for that writing style like whenever there is a sentence that is written in a way that to me is sort of like almost in the wrong order like it jars my brain <laughs> and maybe it's because of my second language but i know that book would take me a hundred years to read so it's just not for me let me tell you my thoughts on a couple of books that i have read yesterday and today amber and dusk this first chapter okay basically this girl traveling with a bunch of other people i want to say it was a train but i'm not entirely certain <laughs> they get stopped by the general or admiral and they basically live in the world refugees i'm not taken too lightly similar to our world sadly or like at least by the state or whatever and the woman that is being questioned, like their leader or whatever, uh, sort of hesitates when asked if there are any refugees. And um, so they decide to search it. And apparently that is a very, very scary concept. I'm not entirely certain what happens. I'm assuming they might just take a lot of people away. Or She really wants to do something about it because everyone basically turned into panic. So she conjures this fake letter with some royal insignia because her power is illusions in that way she gets rid of them but then the whole the entirety of their like travel group sort of starts looking at her weird at her weird i'm not really i'm not sure why yet i think it was mentioned that there might be some prejudice against powers or whatever i'm not sure if she's a refugee i'm not i'm not, I'm not entirely sure it didn't seem like it and then she sort of feels really bad and guilty even though i didn't really understand why because she just saved so many people but i'm assuming it's like explored later on so it wasn't actually like a bad first chapter it definitely wasn't one that i was like wanting to read on so i don't really have many thoughts on this one it could go either way but it didn't really grab onto me and be like i want to know more uh it was like 15 pages or something like that like, i did hear quite a few sort of like negative reviews on this one i didn't actually look on goodreads but just from you guys i remember hearing not the best things about the book so the next one oh holy okay so i have seen the movie when it first came out so like ages and ages ago i think i just like so i knew the themes of this book but i think i just was not prepared for the first chapter to be so heavy and i read it today in the morning i was like well this is a nice start to the day that being said i actually really like the writing style it just feels really truthful and true to the age of well, somewhat true to the age of 14 year old. Very just, oh, just so inherently sad and ter like terrible. And that first chapter, like holy, so many feels. Most of it just being extremely uncomfortable, which is obviously the goal. And ooh, just 
going to keep this one basically is what I'm saying but I will not be reading it now I'm gonna be reading this when I feel in a space that I can read this because currently my anxiety is too much all over the place and my health is just like I'm I'm not ready for this one <laughs> so is the the lovely bones going to back into my shelf the writing style was so good like I find that more and more these days it's like writing style means so much to me I just never really acknowledged it before but also I couldn't pinpoint to you what makes it a writing style that I like yet? The Lovely Bones is basically a story about a girl, <clears throat> a young girl, 14 year old girl, who gets, um, just basically gets lured and uh, physically assaulted and raped and murdered. And this is her from the place of heaven of hers <laughs> telling the story. And I think it's gonna be about the family. Like, it's been a very, very long time since I've seen the movie. I really did enjoy it, I remember. Enjoy it being like, obviously possibly not the best word to explain it but like the movie was impactful which i'm assuming this book would be like 10 10 times that even just from the first chapter it was just so so well done so like straight to the feels so definitely gonna go back into my shelf uh the next one was furthermore um this is a middle grade story and um i don't really read a lot of middle grade just a personal taste is not something that really um, calls to me. I am still of the same opinion. I think this is a quite a whimsical style of writing for this particular one. It reads like a fairy tale, sounds like a fairy tale, not dislike it. Um, it doesn't bother me per se. It's just not something that I see myself reading anytime like soon. And if someone else could read that and love it and give it the love that it deserves, you know? I feel like maybe that's the right thing to do because I don't know if I'll ever get to it. I think this one is just gonna simply go to the unhaul. A girl who was born into this fairyland, well, not fairyland, but like, yeah, kind of a fairyland of like color, but she is born all black and white, basically, other than like a little bit of rose on her cheeks. And in the first chapter, not much happens at all. She just sort of is like the world is explained that it's supposed to like make sense, although like sometimes it rains from the sun and stuff like that. She meets this boy that I think she dropped something and he was like, is this yours? And she just like panicked because that's how her mother taught her to like act and she like runs away. Um, and that was pretty much it. Not much happened. And then the last book that I have read for this checkup was Bring Me Their Hearts. I'm gonna put into you guys the side pile, but I am leaning towards keeping it just because I, whilst I was reading it, I it, there had it had a couple of like not funny but like humorous bits, I suppose. Um, but I remembered this is about a girl who is actually like a witch. I can't remember what's it called now. And she is there trying to get to court the prince of that kingdom. And the prince seems to be super arrogant. And there's two other girls who are like competitors, and he's like sort of questioning their intelligence and blah blah blah. And uh, one girl just <laughs> completely embarrasses herself a bit and another one actually does okay and then obviously our girl is just like let's add shock value so they basically ask what's what is a king worth to the people and she's like exactly the worth is exactly equal to one potato <laughs> i thought it was like fairly fun easy easy going i like the fact that she's a witch and she's actually like undead but she was quite poor when she was alive and her parents got murdered and she's i think she's now in like in debt of this witch that she's going for the court for uh because her actual goal is to rip the heart of the pr prince so like like literally to get the heart of the prince so i'm kind of like inclined to keep it for when i need like sort of like a light-hearted read but also i don't know i'm like inclined on keeping it but i want you guys to like tell me that i'm right <laughs> Okay, 19th of May. Uh, extracted. Basically, it's like an introduction that everyone was trying to like commercially find a way to teleport the goods directly to people who purchase them. And there was a rumor that someone has finally found out a way to actually time travel and that everyone is looking for the person who has figured it out. And then another little bit after that was a little story about a that was just about to commit suicide by walking into the sea and he is stopped by his little son but in a form of a man so clearly it's like from the future um and actually the way that it was written really intrigued me um however i did see so many bad reviews about this 
I think it's especially about like misogyny and one particular female being really really badly written. I am not about that cancel culture and I think that you can still enjoy a book and acknowledge that there are parts that are flawed but I'm also worried that it is actually really bad because a lot some some of the criticism was that it was really promising start which I can tell but um also others said that it was like it went nowhere although that's also a thing that I don't really mind if it's good otherwise so normally from what I read I would put it back in the shelves but I'm gonna actually put this in a pile of you guys decide what I do with them I'm leaning towards keeping but I'm very very interested to hear what you guys think especially if you have read this and then the next one was a shiver of snow and sky this is a story about a town uh, that is very superstitious and I think it's northern lights they believe that there's a god that sends a signal through northern lights and there's i think northern lights some light in the sky because it didn't really specify in the first chapter but uh, a girl of 17 years old and the last time the sky was red which meant danger she she was born but she lost her mother that, to childbirth them all gathering and seeing that the sky is once again turning red obviously starts to panic but she's mostly just angry because she's um not she doesn't understand why this is happening and no one's really giving her an answer so the writing style seemed quite nice like fairly simple i could see myself reading this and not like struggling much or something but i'm not entirely like oh i want to know what happens next but i also wouldn't mind so again not entirely sure i haven't actually looked at the reviews for this one and i'll leave it that way i will ask you guys to tell me what to do with this one as well so hey more things for you to work on <laughs> because I read two chapters of both of these books and I am keeping both of them it's so nice to do that um, so the first one was actually pantomime and in the first chapter there is a person who is trying to try out for the circus but he also let it slip like in the in the mind um that they are running from like police i think the circus director has to having like none of it and he's like okay thank you but like no thank you but he they insist and they climb up all of the way and they jump and that is where the chapter ended and I did want to see more because someone just jumped I want to know what happens so I was already like pretty happy with the chapter it was like nice and short and sweet um, and then I looked at the back and it says Jean's life resembles a debutante's dream yet she hides a secret that would see her shunned by the nobility Jean is both male and female then she displays unwanted magical abilities last seen in mysterious beings from an on almost forgotten ages matters escalate further when her parents plan a devastating betrayal so she flees home dressed as a boy i've forgotten why i picked this up and now i remember and i'm just very excited to actually get to it it might just be me but i don't think this is very well known i might just have not seen it myself anywhere but i've had this for years now and it has both blurbs from lee Bardugo and robin hobbs so i'm like why is this at this pile? I don't know, but it's going back on the show. And then secondly, I think is even lesser known um, book, unless I checked the wrong one, because I quickly looked at Goodreads, Stranger of Tempest, and this is book one of the God Fragments. And I am keeping this one because of the humor. It was, again, like a short, sweet chapter, the first one. And in that one, there are some mercenaries that come in into the room and there's a naked lady in there and she's just completely kicking ass and like it's hilarious how the guys get like really sort of you know oh my god there's a naked woman what the hell <laughs> they're saying um come to rescue you miss and she's saying you'll have to wait i'm busy <laughs> admittedly i'm not necessarily sure what happens but like in that first chapter she pushed the nobleman out of the window um in response of the mercenaries being like let's escape quietly she's like yes quietly <laughs> like shove the guy out of the window i'm very excited to get to this at some point it was very amusing to begin with so next up there is the unbecoming of mara dyer i'm gonna go read the first chapter now Okay, so the first chapter, I'm actually quite intrigued 
At the very first bit, there's like a little letter who, that basically her saying, I need to tell you this so you're not gonna be next, blah, blah, blah. Mara Dyer is not actually my name. And then in the first chapter, it's Mara and her two friends who are at Rachel's birthday, who is one of the friends. They have the Ouija board. Mara does not like Claire, which is the other girl, and Rachel is like the common friend. She's like teased into asking how she dies. Rachel is teased into asking how she dies, and then the board's spells Mara um, and then they just sort of like move on to watching a movie because Mara doesn't really want to like play um, and she pretends to be okay but she's actually very like uneased and it's again a really short chapter and at the end it just says six months later they were both dead and like I am a sucker for this kind of entry like if you pull me in curious in the first chapter then I'm, I'm usually in and this one definitely did probably the most out of all of them because I don't know that was kind of like the, the writing style I quite enjoyed I mean uh, the only ish, the only worry is that it could be a bit too angsty, but I could I couldn't tell <laughs> I couldn't tell if it's gonna be that kind of thing or not, but I'm um, I'm intrigued, so I think I'm gonna keep this one as well. So very nice. I would actually want to go and get more books, but I have this situation. Hello. <laughs> so I have both Zeus and Momo because this is my feet. See, I'm moving him. <laughs> Oh, thank you guys. Guess I'm not moving anywhere. Okay, just read actually a couple of chapters of The Last. This is about a guy who goes out for a conference and then receives a message that Washington has been uh, nuked basically and I believe that is where his wife is. I'm not sure actually, but he loses connection because he loses internet and he's in this hotel um, I quite enjoyed the writing and the chapters were really short and then he just sort of like confesses he did actually want to get away from the family and he feels so sorry, he can't believe he thought he had time and that he doesn't really think anyone's coming. It's quite intriguing. I think I'm gonna keep this one as well, so another one to the keep pile. We got Ace of Shades. Basically, in the first chapter, the girl arrives from a faraway land into this city of sin and starts asking information, and soon enough, she discovers that really shouldn't be speaking with a lot of people, and she's basically looking for her mother who is lost in the city as far as she knows, and she had a note to look for a particular person, but that person seems to be like a lord but everything seems pretty dodgy I initially was very excited about this book because it has like cards and like games and gambling and I think that would be really fun to read about I really don't like the language use the dialect sometimes I really just don't vibe with it and uh, it started pretty cool because the writing style is not actually something that's jarring me is the the dialect that the locals speak in this is just kind of Quite annoying sometimes i just don't vibe with it so i think this one's actually gonna go you know goodbye pile yay <laughs> finally finished them all so i had four left so let's get through them one of them was everless and unfortunately <laughs> i got bored into like three or four chapter uh, no three or four pages in the first chapter but it's basically got this like i was really excited because it's um, about time. Time is basically currency here and I thought it would be really promising but then also it didn't help that I heard some eh things from some of my friends and I think it just really bored me and I don't know why but I just didn't really care and to say that from like five pages where she's just basically like hunting and just a little bit of like info dumpy at the beginning I think it's just not for me this one so this one's gonna be in the goodbye pile I think which is odd because I thought because I really thought this is gonna be one of the ones that I'm possibly gonna put back in the next one that I think I'm also gonna put down uh to give to someone else is Vasa in the Night. I think there was a period in my life that I would have enjoyed this because it's it's definitely odd. It's it's supposed to be odd. It's supposed to be weird. I think just and I don't necessarily say that this is gonna be as a like a bad thing. I think it's just at the point in my life that I am, I really don't vibe well with that kind of writing style. Uh, so just personally for me, it's just gonna be not something that I see myself gravitating towards anytime soon. And I think it's sort of 
futile for me to hold on to this just in case i wouldn't i couldn't even tell you what this is about the first chapter was sort of like this knight being trapped in a man's body which sounds kind of fun but the whole writing style was very again like whimsical type of type of nonsensical writing you know what i mean uh and it's just not have been proven the best thing for me like the Every Heart a Doorway and Alice in Wonderland has proven to me. <laughs> then I have two ones that I think I'm gonna ask you guys to vote on. So there is the light between the the light between worlds, which I am kind of excited for after reading this, but not entirely convinced. But this is about two girls who are like the first chapter starts when they are being attacked, um, like air striked. I think in London, I want to say. Yeah, it's in London. The the youngest girl wishes anywhere we're here, anywhere we're here, and then they kind of get transformed into this other world. Um, the, sister, the older sister is saying, like, we must be dead, but they're not. And I saw that the second chapter starts five years later, and then I read a little bit of synopsis, and it says, so it's basically like every heart a doorway, because it's like the girls then live in that other world, but then get back, I think maybe five years later, I don't know, I haven't gone that far, but um, they seem to come back from one of those sort of like Alice in Wonderland type of places. Um, and you know how I was excited about Every Heart at Doorway because I like the idea. Maybe this is gonna be it, you know, but I really want your input because I don't want to repeat my <laughs> basically the story from the other one because like that was not a great start. So let me know if you think this is gonna be a bit more up my alley. Monsters. This again really excited me f uh, at the beginning because it's supposed to be uh, a Frankenstein retelling of um, but this is following this girl Mary who is supposedly very like philosophical for her age and really like rebellious and in the first chapter she's just going to visit her mother's grave and speak about her how her father is sending her away to Scotland which is yay I mean I did that voluntarily so can't relate with the struggle but but the but the writing style did not really hit me and I think there's something about like I feel like so many books in this category that I picked out had like the papa and mama um thing and i just like i don't i don't like vibe with that i don't know like i don't it's very particular it just doesn't it doesn't call for me like i'm not that like it somehow just ruins it for me i know it's ridiculous like i know but also i'm intrigued to see what this girl would do i think this one i am quite tempted to keep but i want your guys input into this one it is the story of a young woman who defies tradition and society and who draws upon the monstrous elements of her own life to create the most memorable monster of them all and like i want to know more because of that i'm not really about that sort of good old english type of setting with proper families and mama and papa and it's just not it's not something that draws me so I really want you guys to let me know if this is something that you think I would enjoy or if you think that I should like, you know, risk it and see what happens. But I am tempted to keep this one, just so you know. <laughs> and that is it. So, we actually have three piles that are a fairly similar size that I, I can see them here. I'm gonna now very quickly mention the books that I am keeping. Just the names, because obviously you have seen the descriptions and everything. The Last, This Mortal Coil, The Lovely Bones, Pantomime, Stranger of Tempest, and The Unbecoming of Maya Mara Dyer. I have not been able to stop thinking about this one since I read the first chapter, which is entirely rare. I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy the rest of it, but... A very interesting find. Now, the books that are gonna find new homes are Vasa in the Night, Everless, Flashfall, Ace of Shades, The Killing Moon, Ember and Dust, Furthermore, Wolf by Wolf, and Jinxed. And now finally, the third, the third group of the books that I want your opinions on. So I don't know at this point, I don't know how many polls I can enter on the video. If I can, if I can have eight polls, I will if I should keep them or not, but also let me know if you have read these or from what you heard Do you think I would enjoy it? Let me know your honest thoughts on these ones. Also, please don't be upset at me for um, Unhauling some books that might be your favorites. It's entirely possible. I might have misjudged them uh, If you feel very strongly about one of them, let me know. I will wait till feedback comes back People have different tastes, you know, it's fine, but please, please don't hate me Okay <laughs> 
Okay. But the books that you guys decide the fate of are Monstrous by Sharon Dogger, The Light Between Worlds, A Shiver of Snow and Sky with the different lights above in the sky, Extracted by R.R. Haywood, Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf, The Memory Book by Lara Avery, then we have Spectacle by Jodie Lynn Zdrog. And then lastly, The Splintered Silence by Kayla Olson. So yeah, that is everything. I think I am sort of anticipating having a very <laughs> short wrap-up this month. So I think I'm actually gonna let you know. I'm gonna wait for your feedback and I'm gonna let you know what you guys decided on these particular books in the next wrap-up. So May's wrap-up, I think. I think. I might change my mind, but that's my plan at the moment. This has been a journey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let me know all of your thoughts about everything. Again, please, please, please don't hate me if it was one of your favorite books somewhere, because I just need all the positive energy, please. I can't deal with the hate. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm always excited to read comments, but for this video in particular, so... Don't hesitate, tippity tappity in the comment section. And again, thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome, stay kind, and I'll see you very soon. Bye!